Hello! In today's video, I'm going to be engraving this little Highland cow onto the back of a piece of mirror, in fact. This was a request from a subscriber, so I'll just go through this today with you. The first step is obviously to transfer the image. In this case, I used a piece of carbon paper to copy it onto the back of the mirror and then to remove some of the silvering from the back. I tend to use a polishing rubber to do that. Now it's very important obviously to stay inside the lines when you do that because if you take off too much silver you can't put it back on. With the silvering off I then start to engrave in the main shape of the cow. As with my usual process I start with the bit that's probably farthest away from us which in this case is the back of the cow and I've got quite a large flame shaped bar here just cutting away some of the glass, making sure I've got the outlines in properly and cutting to the depth I think I'll need to get the shape of the cow to show in the glass. Now if you watch, you'll see I'm moving the bar in a way so that the, the strokes that are left behind will mimic how the cow's fur lies because these cows are famously hairy and one of the most important things to be able to do is to get the fur to look properly textured. So having done the main part of the body, I've moved to a much smaller ball-shaped diamond bar and I'm going around the edges to tidy them up, make them look quite neat, but also using short strokes so that I can get the effect of the fur. Now I have to carry that on over the whole body of the cow here. But all, always what I'm trying to do is make sure that the marks I leave will look like the fur and the way the fur lies on the cow's body. So I spend a lot of time looking at my reference photos, looking at where the lines of light and shade are inside the fur. I've moved on to the ear here with, again, a spherical ball-shaped diamond bar. Now the top line of the ear is quite sharp, um, so I have to put that in quite neatly. So I'm being very careful to get the outline, but as we go down the ear, what we have is more hair falling down. So again, I'm putting in the lines of the fur. And the same on the other side, the, the sharper upper line first of all. And then I'll begin to work down with the diamond bar to try and get the effect of the fur growing down over the front of the ear. Now I said these cows are famously hairy and of course usually also red now. Although they weren't always in the past, they used to be different colours, dark, dark colours, black and loads of different colours. but. The story goes that Queen Victoria remarked to somebody once that she liked to see the red ones, so people tried to breed more of the red colour. So that's why we see more red-coloured Highland cows. But you will always see black ones and some which are much paler in colour as well. Now, continued the engraving there onto the folds on the neck, and now I've put a larger-sized spherical diamond to start working on the horns. I want to cut these horns quite deep. This glass is quite thick. It's a good four millimetres thick, so I've got plenty of glass to work on. And by cutting deeply in here, I can make it look as if the horns have some form, as if they're tube shaped, if you like. But obviously I don't want too much texture on here. It's not like where we have the fur on the body. I want a smooth, cylindrical shape for the horns. And the bigger bar is helping me to get that. Now, back to doing some more fur. And as I said, texture is vitally important. Now, the back of the cow here where I'm working, the lines I'm using are relatively short. Um, if I look at my reference photo, you don't see the same detail in the fur back here. So I'm trying to get texture in, but without the great long locks of hair that we'll see at the front of the cow. The strokes are a little bit shorter, following the lines of the fur, and very carefully I'm making sure that I don't have a sharp line at the back, that I can run over that a little bit so that it looks fluffy and hairy. 
That same process is used all over the body of the cow, following the lines, making sure I get the direction that the hair grows in, looking right, and relatively short little strokes here. Now, just as I didn't want a straight line at the back of the cow, I don't really want a straight line at the top of the head either. They're quite fluffy on the top. So there's a, a broken up the top line. And then with that same bar, I'm starting to engrave the long locks of hair on the front of the cow's face. I think, I think that's called the Dawson. Now everybody thinks Highland cows can't see out because they've got all this hair in front of their eyes, but actually their eyes are at the side of their heads, not at the front as ours are, so they see out just fine. And I suppose these bits of fur help to protect. I don't know. And this part, the Dawson on the cow, is where you see the most defined locks of hair. And you'll see when I'm graving this, I'm actually moving the bar quite slowly. I'm giving it quite a lot of time to cut these locks of hair in. The reason I'm doing that is by giving it time, it can cut a little bit deeper. I don't need to lean very hard on it to make it do that. I just need to give it time so that it can cut into the, gra into the glass. And I think maybe you can start to see how the individual little locks of hair are beginning to show up. And the little bits at the front over the nose don't need to be cut quite so deeply, but I need to put them in first so that when I put on the longer bits, they can be engraved over the top of it and it'll look like they're lying over the top of them and they're a little bit closer to you. So using the bar, just do the area around the nose and then I come back up to the top and start putting in the longer bits of hair, which will come right down the front of the cow's face here. Again, I'm cutting those really quite deeply. I'm following that down around both sides of the face, looking at where the fur lies, and where it splits and one half goes down one side of the face and the other half goes down the other side of the face. So just to try and make it look fairly natural. And having done that, I need to make sure I've got fur all the way down um, both sides of the face. And then what I'll need to do is come down and tidy up round about the little nose, making sure there's no blank parts and that I've got the right shape left behind for the nose. So with that done, what I've done, I've changed to a small green stone, turned off the water because I usually do these bits dry, and I'm beginning to fill in the area of the nose. The reason for the green stone is because it leaves me a slightly smoother finish. Now the, the skin on the cow's nose is actually quite, although it's dimpled, it's quite smooth. So the green stone should hopefully let me get that sort of texture in there. And I'm filling in around the nostrils, but I'm trying to leave the nostrils reasonably intact so that I can keep a dark area there. I know they look a little bit wonky now, but they, they won't by the time I'm finished, I promise you. Uh, this little green stone is quite tiny and is quite useful for this sort of job because often green stones are quite big um, and they're not so useful when you're trying to get into the detail. And I also need to use the same stone to get the little chin underneath the little lip there. So again, the little stone's useful for that. And changing to a white Arkansas stone, I can engrave slightly the actual nostrils, the bits that I'm want, going to want to be dark. Um, I don't want to leave a bit that's not engraved. I want it to look as if it's been engraved. But using the, the white Arkansas stone gives a very smooth finish. And when I go back and polish over that, it'll leave quite a dark area. So it looks like there's a, the whole the space for the nostril. This is um, an old blue uh, polishing rubber. The reason it's this peculiar shape is I was using it to polish something else and it's left me with quite a sharp edge on it. And it's actually quite useful for this one because it gives me a, an edge I can work with. But I've started using it to go over the areas where there's going to be some shadow. Now that very sharp edge, by turning it on the side here, I can get quite close up to the edge of the engraving to get the shade in. 
as I said at the start, you want to be really careful that you don't take away too much of the silver on the mirror. If you go over that edge, you can't really put it back. So very, very careful around the edges of the engraving with the polishing rubber. But as I said, this very fine edge, which is just a result of wear and tear of how I've been using it. That very fine edge is quite useful for me at this point. So I'm glad I've got that. You can see how I have to come right up to the edge to get the shade at the front legs here. And the very sharp knife-like edge on the polishing rubber is helping me with that. Now this is just an initial polish, but by doing that I can start to see where the light and the dark is falling in the engraving. And then go back and start filling in a bit more detail. So I've got a very fine little uh, ball-shaped diamond in in the machine here and I'm using that to pick out individual hairs to put in more highlights and to make sure I've got the texture that I want at the moment round about the face little fluffy bits at the side of the face and this is quite a small I mean this is a really tiny ball you could use a rat a rat's tail for the same thing but all I'm doing is looking for the areas of highlight and then having done that on the face, I'm going round the horns because we need the edges in these horns to be very crisp, very smooth. So this little ball shaped diamond is helping me to do that, to make sure I don't have any chipped or worn bits at the edges. And it's quite useful for that. Again, going over the ear, as I said, there are these very fluffy bits which fall down over the front of the ear. And so using the ball-shaped diamond, I can pick out those individual little tufts. Now there are quite a lot of little areas of highlight around about the top of the head and the side of the face. I'm just trying to pick those out now. So that I'm sure we get, we can see the, the texture and the detail. This is the bit of the process which probably takes the longest for me. Possibly because I focus too much on the detail. Maybe I should take, pay less attention to that, but I can't help myself. It's, you know, everybody has their own style. This happens to be mine. Repeating that on the other side picking out the individual little hairs and running them down because they're long and they, they sort of dangle down from the ear. Obviously being very pernickety here and picking out some longer ones. Oh, pernickety, that's a Scottish word. Um, fussy, that's the one. <laughs> Now we have areas of highlight along the back as well, particularly along the top of the back and the top of these bones. I think they're called pin bones. They, they sort of stick out at the top of the hip. So I'm trying to get the highlight on there. But if you look again, you'll see I'm still following always the line that the fur grows in and looking for areas of light and dark in the reference photo so I can make it look as natural as I can. This area is not as, the, the individual locks of here aren't as obvious as they are on the cow's face. But they're still there and you still need that texture in the fur if you want it to look like an actual Highland cow. I carry that process on right down the side there, looking at the lines of growth in the fur and picking out lighter areas Moving on to this, the front, front, or I suppose it's the back of the front leg. Again, there's an area where I need more texture in the fur. At this point, I think I've moved to a rat's tail um, to give me the very finest lines. Now, you could have, you could use that all the way through, but sometimes I think it's helpful to use the the spherical diamond. It gives a bit more kind of broader line, a bit more distinct line. 
but the rat's tail is letting me get the fur texture in at the back of that front leg there. And there's also some highlighting in the front, right on the front. And around about these little folds of skin that are at the front of the cow. Now using this same bar, I'm picking out little areas of highlight around about the cow's nostril. Once I get this all polished out, you'll see that better because the nostril itself will be dark and these little areas of highlight will show up a bit more. But the light always catches the area around about the nostrils a little bit. And about down towards the front of the cow here, we have some more longer locks of hair. So just using this same rat's tail bar, I'm beginning to pick those out and also once more picking out some of the highlights in the very long locks of hair on the cow's face, on the dawson on the cow's face. They really are very cute, these cows, but um, they're also absolutely huge. You would think they were, they're quite friendly mostly, but I, I don't think I would want to uh, do anything that would upset them because they're they're huge and they've got great big horns, so best to leave them in peace. Still working on these longer hairs from the front, trying to get the texture so it actually looks like we've got hair on the engraving. This is a, again, it's the spherical diamond bar, so that gives me a, a slightly broader stroke. And the last little bits of hair and fur on the back of the back legs there. Always pulling it out and over the outline because I don't want a very firm line at the back there. Now with most of that engraving done, I'm going to go over again and do some more polishing. This particular polishing rubber is quite a hard rubber, so it doesn't bend into the shapes I've engraved out. What it tends to do is polish the little ridges of glass that are left between the engraved lines. So that's quite good for making the individual little strokes stand out better and helping the texture to show up. It sort of rides over the deeper troughs that the, the diamond bars have cut into the glass, but polishes the bits that are left behind, if that makes sense. Now you'll see that maybe a bit better here when I turn it in. You can see how deeply I've cut some of these bits of hair. And this rubber isn't going to go into those cuts. It'll just polish the bits left out between them. There again, you can see how deeply it's been cut. There's quite a lot of glass taken away there. But as I said, this mirror's quite thick, so I've got plenty of glass to work with. Very, very carefully using the polishing rubber to get along the bottom of the horns there. But being really careful because I do not want it to slip and take away some of that silvering. I would just eat myself. And there, there's how he's looking after the polishing up. Now for me, whenever I'm doing something with fur, it is, it's an iterative process. I will engrave a bit, then polish it to put in the shades, and then go back and engrave again to put the highlights back in, or to add more texture when I think more is needed. So I'm coming back here again with the little rat's tail bar, which is quite a fine one, and picking out individual hairs, making bits a little bit lighter if I think they need it. And now, having done all that, of course our little cow needs somewhere to stand. This particular cow is standing in a field of long grass, and what I'm using here is a, it's actually a very old rat's tail bar, which I've 
um, flattened the point off several times now, but it seems to be working quite well for the grass here. And it's just long individual strokes wherever I think there would be a piece of grass. And that will hopefully give the cow a, a position, a place to stand. But it takes a little bit of time. You can't brush this. It has to be cut deeply enough that it comes over the top of the cow. And I've moved for this very last stage to a slightly finer rat's tail bar just so that we can get little finer pieces of grass in just to make it look you know as as, as pretty as we can and make the grass the grass doesn't all grow straight up and down grass grows in all sorts of directions Usually clumps will grow in the same sort of direction, so it's not just random, but it's not just straight up and down. So I spend a lot of time thinking about how the grass in that particular place would lie. So at the front here, I've got it twisting out to the front there. And I'm just sort of sharpening up the points of some of these little bits of grass to just give them a bit more definition. And once that is all completed, then we have a highland cow. And this is how it looks once it's mounted up into a little piece of wood. What I would normally do with these is put a little tea light, a candle behind them. So they look quite pretty once they're all lit up. And that is how I would go about engraving a highland cow. You may do it differently. Everybody has their own style. That's the way I do it, and that's an idea of how I did this one. Now, as I said, my next video will be looking at engraving on sea glass. I hope to get that one out reasonably quickly, and I'm actually quite looking forward to it because it's not something I've done very much of. So thank you very much to the subscribers who suggested that, and I hope that you'll join me for, for that video. Thank you for watching.